nobody's entitled to anything, nobody gets anything. You have to go out there and work for it, perform at a level at which you earn it. Each week, we all have to prove ourselves competitively to each other and to our teammates. There you go. And that is uh, and that is a little of Dynasty, the brand new series out on Apple based on the book by Jeff Benedict, best-selling book. Uh, he's author of so many best-selling books, but this one is about the rise of the New England Patriots under Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady. Listen, they might be the most dominant team in the history of sports over the longer period of time. In a time in which it just doesn't, you don't even get back-to-back -back championships, let alone six championships, six Super Bowls. And they dropped out and they came back. And it was, but now it's like you got the first number one pick in the draft and you held on to him. This guy was a six round pick famously. Bill Belichick had just gotten fired from the Browns as they moved cities. And of course, uh, Robert Kraft bought the team with no experience, just a lot of money and a great businessman. And somehow the mix worked. But there were a lot of stuff going behind the scenes. And you always wanted to know what the real story is. Jeff Benedict found the real story. But Jeff, you were kind enough to mail me yesterday. The 10-part series, I have a special screener, so don't call me. I'm not allowed to show it to anybody else. But I saw the first two parts. You're already getting stuff I didn't know. How did you get these guys to talk? And congratulations. Hey, Brian, thanks. And thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure to, to be on with you. Um, the book was a great uh, launch pad for a docuseries, Brian. I, I wanted to turn this into a, a television series even before I started writing the book. And I was really fortunate to get with the same filmmaker who turned uh, my Tiger Woods book that I did with Armin Katayan into an HBO documentary. And we were really fortunate because we had access to 35,000 hours of archival video that no one had ever seen. Even the Patriots didn't know what they had in their archive. They've been filming all this stuff for 20 years and just storing it in an archive. And uh, we were able to go through it. And a lot of what you saw in those first two episodes, the, the kind of raw footage that you were referring to, was tucked away in, in the archive. And it, it just gives you a look at these players, Brady, Belichick, Bledsoe, all of these guys, Bill Parcells, in a way you've never seen them before. And it's, it's really compelling. I, I had my jaw dropped so many times as we were going through this footage. How did you get it? I mean, did you just pay a price? Say how much for it? So the, the way you get uh, the footage like this was obviously um, we partnered with the Patriots in the sense that this is their archive. And we had I had the cooperation of the team when I wrote the book. I was inside the organization for, as you know, for two plus years. And then we pivoted to turning it into a docuseries, which is a completely different animal than a book. But that partnership was really critical. And as Imagine documentaries and Apple TV plus mm -hmm. joined uh, and Matt Hamachek, the director, um, we worked with the Patriots. They gave us access to their archive. And uh, it, it was just a it took right. a long time, though, to get through all that footage. I mean, you see the first apartment that Teddy that uh, that Tom Brady stayed in and how happy he was when he made the team as a six round pick. The the f feeling he had when he wasn't getting drafted and uh all these other quarterbacks getting drafted ahead of him. Nothing against Chad Pennington, but wouldn't the Jets love to have switched that pick? And uh, Carmazzi of Hofstra University was picked to, was picked ahead of him by San Francisco. No one thought he'd be that good. Uh, he ended up being great, just coming into his own because people underestimated his will, it seems. And by the way, if you're smart enough to be watching the show, uh, Jeff is on Skype. So if you go on the Fox News app, you can see the whole show, and you just go go over there until you get the Fox News radio. Here's Teddy Bruschi, the outstanding linebacker. Talk about what he thought when Brady walked in and took over. Cut 52. Tom gathered us around, and like I remember thinking, oh, look at the kid. He's trying. Yeah. <laughs> For anyone that says, oh, yeah, we knew Tom was going to lead us to victories, that's bullshit. I mean, come on. This guy's never done anything for us before. I can't stand it. Run it again. Huddle up and run it again, Brady. From that first practice on, it's like, okay, can you run the huddle? Can you grasp the offense? He didn't know what he was doing at times. So that is the reality because Drew Bledsoe gets hit by Mo Lewis of the Jets. He almost dies, and no one knew. They gave him $100 million. He started, be to start at the beginning to give the New England Patriots hope, obviously. Uh, Bill Parcells comes over, and they, and they start winning for the first time ever. They only had one uh, you say in the book, one home playoff game in about uh, 20 years. But when, when Bledsoe goes down, they go to Brady. Did they know what they had, Jeff? No. 
No, they didn't know what they had. Uh, there was no way they could know. I mean, when you we talk about how everybody passed over Brady, that's how he ended up the 199th pick. Well, the Patriots passed over him too. I mean, they had a bunch of picks before they got to 199. But when they got to 199 and saw that Tom was still up there, they were shocked that no one else had picked him up. And so they took him. And it's it's interesting, Brian, because the last thing the Patriots needed in 2000 was a quarterback. They had Drew Bledsoe. I mean, he was considered, he was a $100 million man. They didn't need a quarterback. They took him because no one else did, and they thought he's the best talent left on the board. We'll see what happens. When Drew went down, I think by the time Drew went down, Bill realized there was something different about Tom Brady. He certainly couldn't have foreseen what was going to happen, but he really wanted uh, Tom in there. And at the beginning of that season, Brian, what's really interesting is the beginning of that season, he Bill actually told Robert Kraft that if he was going to put the player in that he thought he should at quarterback, he'd be playing Tom. But he couldn't do that because Drew was a $100 million guy. But then two games in, Drew gets hurt. He has no choice. He puts Tom in. The real issue was, well, what happens when Drew comes back and he's medically cleared? And you know, because you watch the first two episodes, that's what that drama is all about. Bill Belichick makes arguably one of the gutsiest calls in the history of the NFL to stick with Brady, the unproven guy. And it it panned out. It, and the fact that Kraft let him do that, there aren't many owners that would have had the backbone to allow their head coach to do something like that and stand behind him. And, you know, because you, you mentioned in the book that Drew Bledsoe said, I, he, I met with Kraft. I said, what can you do about this? And if I if I make this move, it's not going to make either of us happy. It's going to get me out with the coach, and then the coach is going to be mad that I do it, even though he pays his salary. So Belichick and Brady were working together. Here's how they describe their relationship. Cut 53. Tom understood his role on and off the field, how to help the team. He prepared extremely hard individually uh, on his fundamentals, his techniques. Tom, I feel like, got the best out of me because he was so well prepared that I felt like I had to keep up with his preparation. I think Coach saw something in me that he could work with. We had quarterback school, and there was me and Coach Belichick. We'd sit in there, and we just were football junkies from morning, noon, night. That's all we did was talk about football. I loved working with Tom every day, seeing the game through the quarterback's eyes and understanding what he saw. I think those are things that helped me be a better coach. Coach Belichick taught me so much. I could not be the player I was without him. So they're saying that now. But when they were going through it, Robert Kraft is not appreciated enough about how he kept those two working together because there was a fracture there. Without giving away the series, since you bring us behind the scenes, what could you tell us? So, uh, good question. And let me just say one thing about the clip you just played, Brian. Tom used the word junkie. He said, we, Bill and I, were football junkies. Junkies are addicts. We think of that usually in terms of drugs. They're football junkies. They were literally addicted to football and winning. And that's one of the key reasons why they were so unbeatable together, Bill and Tom. Uh, They were... They were an unbeatable pair. And so in comes the Robert Kraft situation for your question. As time goes on, and this series will take the viewer there, not in episodes one and two, but by the time you get to the latter episodes, you see some of the stress fractures that come in a long marriage. And Bill and Tom are married for 20 years. And the last 10 of those years, I think Robert Kraft's biggest role as the owner It's the invisible role is keeping those two together. That's the diplomacy factor, the shuttle diplomacy that he plays because he had a unique relationship with Bill and a unique relationship with Tom. And he went back and forth, making sure that both guys had what they need to keep them together, because if they'd been left to their own devices, Tom and Bill would not have lasted together for 20 years. So one thing about Bill Belichick, they say he's different behind the scenes and uh... And I don't know what you how you feel about it than he is in front of the camera. He says two or three words, but evidently he's not the most wordy guy when it comes to players. And it's a brutal business. If you're done, even if you won three Super Bowls, you're cut. If you're not good enough, or I get somebody in cheaper. Uh, they seem to. One thing that seemed to work is he treated Tom Brady worse, uh, equal if not worse than everybody else, and that in a way helped Brady be one of the guys, didn't it? Well, it, it, it helped a lot of things. You know, think about it, Brian, because I know you're a, a big consumer of sports. If you ask yourself a real honest question, how many 
star quarterbacks. I'm not talking about rank and file, but look at the big names. Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, John Elway. Russell Wilson the- with his own suite and his, <laughs> his own play. It's amazing as compared to what, what Brady got. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. But if you look at the guys I just listed, how many of them do you think would, would have been able to do what Tom did and in terms of submerging his ego, taking that kind of... Uh, I'll call it punishment, but I mean, Bill rode him harder than anybody else on the team. The greater Tom became, the harder Bill rode him. And all of the other players got in line because the star was in line. I mean, it's kind of hard to step out and say, hey, when when Tom Brady is taking it, when Randy Moss comes to New England in 2007 and goes to his first team meeting and sees Bill Belichick tearing into Tom Brady, you can't help but just drop your jaw and go, wow. I, I mean, I guess if Tom has to do that, we're, we're all up signing up for this. It was a, what allowed Bill's coaching style to do what it did for that team. It, it, that's why it's the pair of them. It's not one guy more important than the other. It's the pair of Brady right. and Belichick that's magic. And Jeff, here's your proof. Mac Jones melted. You know, he came out highly more highly touted than Brady. Mac Jones coming out of Alabama. Great friends. Nick Saban, him. Great quarterback. He just got worse and worse and worse. And now you have, when, when Belichick walks into Cleveland in their last years, Bertie Kozar is a local legend, but born in Ohio, wants to play for the Browns. And he comes in and goes, yeah, his skills have waned. Let's cut him. Cuts him without a backup. And now the team starts losing. He had to have armed guards on his block. So he walks in and goes, oh, Drew Bledsoe, $100 million, future of the franchise? I think the other guy's better. I'm just playing him. I don't care. So that's so, it's such an interesting mindset. It, it is. And it sounds ruthless. And, and actually, Brian, it is. It is ruthless. And, and it's cold-blooded. But this is the NFL. It is the, I know, most, I know. Competitive, it's the most competitive team sport in America. And, and at the end of the day, we measure success by one thing. Do you win? And Bill Belichick, in his methods, won more than anybody else. So it's kind of hard to sit here and armchair quarterback and say, well, you know, he he won. And he won with Tom. And it's because Tom had that mentality. Yeah. uh, By the way, Jeff Benedict here. He's talking about his books now, a a docuseries on Apple TV. You got to watch it. So I want you to hear a couple of things. They had Spygate and they had Deflategate. The Spygate, did they actually look at the footage of the Rams practicing before the Super Bowl that allowed the greatest show on turf to be neutralized in New Orleans the year of of 2001 and the 9-11 attacks, U2 at halftime? I was actually there. Here's what Robert Kraft said to Belichick when he asked him about Spygate. Cut 55. I went right over to Bill and I said, let me ask you something, Bill. How important to us is something like that on a scale of one to a hundred. And he said to me, one. I said to him, then you're a real schmuck. Wow, is that angry. You want to bring some color to that story? Uh, yeah, I will. Because uh, if you put that in, in the timeline, that's seven years into the dynasty. The Patriots have won three Super Bowls at that point. This is the start of the 07 season. And they've just got Randy Moss to the team. They're about to go 16-0. and but this is the first game of that 16-0 and season in the Meadowlands against the Jets. They throttle the Jets. Randy Moss goes wild. But the game is overcome by what happened at halftime because the Patriots had a guy on the sideline who was taping the signals of the Jets' defensive coach. And they got caught, and it turned into a massive, uh, just a massive scandal. And, and eventually... Uh, Belichick owned up to it. The Patriots uh, were fined and punished. Did it have anything to do with why they beat the Jets? No. Uh, did it give them an advantage in that game? No. That's that was kind of Kraft's question to Bill. Like then why did why was this happening? And but that Brian that changes a lot of people's perception about the team was affected by what happened in the Meadowlands that day with the Jets. But it also did something else, Brian, and this is what's fascinating to me. That season, after those allegations were levied against Bill and the team, they went on a literally on a rampage. They were clubbing teams, punishing them to basically demonstrate what they were. And and, I mean, they went undefeated that year. Until? Uh, So. Until? 
until they get to the Super Bowl and face the Giants for the second time and and one of the most epic Super Bowls ever, right? Because the Giants slayed the dragon that game with it with an incredible helmet catch in, in the final minute of play. I mean, it's just it's it's epic stuff. You can't make this stuff up. I know. And you didn't. It's in Dynasty. It's all facts backed up by the people with cooperation from the players. Jeff, congratulations. I know what a titanic task this is to write the book and to do the series. I can't even imagine. But I love it, and I'm a Giant fan. I, this is one of those things like the Jordan series. You don't have to be a basketball fan. The, if you like people, this is a real-life soap opera and what they had to do to sacrifice to get victory and then maybe give, give you an idea why everybody's struggling separately since. Jeff, thanks so much. Congratulations. We're going to watch Apple TV tonight. Thank you, Brian. Always a pleasure. 